Welcome to Make Something With Me, David Petruto. Today, I'm going to show you my new CNC and some of the crazy features. And we're gonna take this CNC over to my workbench and we're going to carve an inlay into the workbench, which sounds crazy and dumb, but that's what I wanna do. But before we do that, I'd like to go over some of the cool features. This is the Stepcraft M series. This is the biggest of the three sizes in this particular series. This is the M1000, which has a 26.75 by 41.1 workspace. They do have other series, which you can cut full sheets of plywood. They even have smaller ones. One of the cool features about this Stepcraft CNC is it has two table heights. So you have your, your normal table height, and then below it, you have a second table height. So if you're milling something that is really tall and you can't get it underneath there, you can take the top table off. And you can reconfigure this into any way that you want. And I have specialized this just for my needs. When you order this machine, you can get the MDF top with the T-slots or you can get the aluminum top with the T-track. I have the MDF top here and then I cut a spoil board that drops into right here. So I can use these clamps. These are really cool clamps to clamp my work piece here when I'm not carving all the way through. But when I do want to carve all the way through, I can, can just carve right into the spoil board and then replace this, you know, every so often as necessary. And then down below, I have that second table height with the track on there that needs to be clamped on there so it's nice and sturdy but for demonstration purposes and what we're going to do i don't have that clamped in there just yet this is an option that you can get for the cnc this is the vertical clamping fixture let's say you wanted to cut dovetails on the cnc you could clamp it onto there cut your finger joints or your dovetails or whatever i need to cut a hole into into my bench here so I can put long pieces in there and clamp it there. But that is a super cool feature. Another thing that this CNC does is it can cut below that second table height. So I could take this to the floor and I could cut a design into the floor if I want to. So this is great for contractors who have a client that wants to design something and do an inlay into the floor. You could put it up on the wall and cut on the wall. This is a the clamping fixture. So you attach this to the CNC, you hook up a shop vac, and it's got, uh, it creates an airtight seal and pulls the whole machine down onto the floor or onto the wall, which is super cool. So it it's fixed and doesn't move. That's, that's super freaking cool. Since I have the bigger one, I think this weighs, now don't quote me on this, but like 90 some pounds. I am not going to mount my CNC to the wall. A little too heavy, a little too awkward, but I am going to move it over to the bench to carve into the bench. This can be converted into a 3D printer, a laser engraver, and a plotter or cutter where you can get different attachments for the head here, which is really freaking cool. You can get a tool changer for this. So if you have a job that uses multiple bits, when it completes the one job, it can go over to the tool changer, which is hooked up to your air compressor and then pull up the next bit and then continue its job. I thought I wanted that. I don't really need that um, since I don't usually leave my CNC alone and then go do other things. I'm usually in the room so I can pause in between tool changes and do it myself. That is an option for the future. There's also the um, uh, 3D access lathe thing. Again, whatever it's officially called, I'll throw it up on the screen. Fourth access. Fourth access. Thank you. Dan knows what I'm talking about. I don't. But uh, you, could, uh, you could make spindles or you could do designs into cylindrical type things. I guess that's an option that I might look into in the future. So I gave Dan my old CNC, totally nothing wrong with that CNC. It's a great um, CNC. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a low cost entry into the world of CNC -ing. and you put it together yourself, which saves you a lot of money. This, this is a huge upgrade, not only because of all the attachments and things you can get for it, is it's got these big beefy steel I don't even know what you call this, but it's it, the rigidity is 
it's a lot more rigid is what I'm trying to say. I upgraded to the high precision ball screws, which allows for some crazy precise repeatability. It is overkill for most people. It's already, it's, it's, it's already a very precise machine. I wanted a little bit more precision because one of the things that I want to do is uh, cylinder heads for go-kart engines. I want to be able to shave off an exact amount. And so I got the ball screws. Woodworkers, most people, we almost lost the lash cap. That's what that is. That is a lash cap on the valve train. Most woodworkers probably don't need to upgrade to the high precision ball screws, but I did because I'm going to mill, this is aluminum. You can do wood and is it called non-ferrous metals? So brass, aluminum. So I'm gonna use my CNC for to do some crazy head milling, uh, cylinder milling stuff for the go-kart. That is another time, that is another video. Maybe we'll dive into that. Maybe we won't. This can use any number of spindles. I have the Stepcraft spindle in mind. This actually talks to the computer so I can turn it off or on and control the speed through the computer, which is really nice. This is a really cheap computer off of Amazon that is running Windows. And then I have it hooked up to a touchscreen monitor. So I don't have to use a mouse or a keyboard. So everything is, is touchscreen. I know we're getting we're getting to the bench, we're getting to the workbench stuff. We're gonna we're gonna show you some hot CNC action here in a little bit. Since this machine can carve below its table height, I'm gonna take mine over to my workbench and I'm going to carve this design. It means nothing, it's just, a, just an abstract design. And so like this is my workbench, this is the T-track that I have on my workbench, and then we're going to do, I think, a walnut inlay. And then I'm also going to pour some colored epoxy so it looks like paint drips, dripping uh, in an unnatural way. Just a cool, what I think is a cool art design that I wanted to, you've seen my shop. I mean, look at, look at the color. We've, we've added all this new color to the shop and my buddy Matt Taylor painted this, this mural here. I'm trying to, trying to make the place a little bit more playful, a little bit more colorful and I'm going to take a chance and ruin my three inch beautiful maple top workbench with this inlay. So I now have the CNC over to the bench. Thank you, Dan, for helping me move that. I have it clamped down. We talked about the vacuum rails. That doesn't work in this case because this overhangs the bench and there's nowhere to put the vacuum rails. So if we were actually doing this on the floor, we would use the vacuum rails, but we're doing it on, be on my bench. So I've got it clamped down and I've got some stops on the bench kind of to keep it from racking. To be honest with you, I, the machine is so heavy, it probably doesn't even need to be clamped down, but we're gonna do things the right way, at least for now. I've got my machine all zeroed out over here and I have my zero in the center. And then I've already done kind of an air run to make sure that it is going to carve within the boundaries. This is my workbench. I'm a little nervous, but I've gone through everything and I've made sure that this is going to, this should be fine. It's gonna to be totally fine. It is a quarter inch upcut bit which gets rid of the chips for the main part of this carve. And then it's going to use an eighth inch bit. This is a two, two bit operation that has a down cut, which gives a nice clean edge around the edge. And so in my software, I use VCarve Pro. So here you get the, you can kind of preview how it's going to look and you can preview the different passes and it kind of gives you a 3D representation. So the next thing I need to do is shut up and start carving. The one thing I forgot to do is get my dust collection correct. It's up too high. So we're just gonna make a mess. So we got that first pass all done. 
we forgot to set our dust collection height so it wasn't doing anything. So Dan and I had to follow it and baby the machine the whole time. So now I'm going to put an eighth inch bit in there and it's going to do the detail work where the, the paint drips are going to be and it's gonna do one final pass. That eighth inch uh, with a downward spiral bit really left a nice, nice clean cut. Everything looks great. I haven't screwed up my bench yet and it is within the boundaries that I drew on the bench. So I was so nervous I was gonna screw this up because this is a beautiful maple top bench, but uh, everything came out great. So uh, the next thing we need to do is the inlay part. I'm just gonna leave the CNC right here and I'm going to reinstall a part of the table and then just, oh, actually, before we do that, we need to. All right, so we're just gonna put a small section of table back in. And these, they're not, uh, they're not screws. I don't know what you, what you call them, but like a half a turn tightens them into place. Cam. Cam, yeah. So it's really quick and easy to take it off and put it back on. So we tighten that in place. There is a piece of aluminum extrusion going down the middle here to keep out some of the flex. I've got some MDF that I'm going to use as my waste board and that is just toggle clamp on there real good. So that's not gonna go anywhere. And then we did the thing where we cut all the walnut and basically, I am just going to screw this down to the MDF. So this is a cool bit where it has a depth stop on there and then also cuts a head for the screw as well as the, for the screw. I just need to make sure that my bit doesn't hit these steel screws. I have a tool coming in the mail that I'm gonna show off in a future video. It's a better hold down method. And if for whatever reason your bit hits the, the hold down, uh, it won't ruin the bit. You can get brass screws for this. That's probably ideal in this situation. I don't have any. It's a run what you brung situation today. I'm just going to make sure that I don't hit the screws. Check this out. I did not realize this before, but the, the, the dust collection thing is adjustable. <laughs> you would think I would know this. So check this out. So that fits on there with a magnet and then it, it moves up and down. So it's always on the surface. I can't believe I just discovered this adjustable automatic adjusting dust collection thing. It is on there. So now we're gonna hook up our hose and uh, we're going to onion skin. I, that might be the proper term. Where we don't cut all the way through, we'll leave a thin little layer and then we can sand that off to remove the pieces. forget to turn on the dust collection. All right, so moving a little bit forward in time, I've cut out all the circles. Now I'm cutting the bars for this design. And we tried the onion skinning technique where you don't carve all the way through and then you sand the piece free. The problem is this walnut, it's a little warped. So the onion skinning wasn't working. Onion skinny, onion skinning. So then we tried to double-sided tape, but because some of the walnut was warped, that double-sided tape wasn't holding the piece in there. And then as that piece broke free, it would fly out. So for whatever reason, I'm really stubborn and I hate using tabs in, in inlay work. We're using tabs because that's the right way to do it. I'm just, I'm stubborn. I always have this, this feeling like 
I'm going to sand away the tabs and I'm going to sand too far and all of a sudden the pieces aren't going to fit perfect. It's going to be fine, Pachudo. Get over it. Let's jog this out of the way. And then we can unscrew this. Oh, and those tabs broke right off. So I don't have to bandsaw them off, but I do have to take them over to the disc sander. They will fit right in there. That's such a good fit. We have a minus 0.01 offset, so the inlay piece is slightly smaller and that fits in there almost like a piston fit. Woo! I don't need glue in the entire pocket so I'm just going around the edge here a little bit here and a little bit here. I am also using some CA glue and this is going to work as a clamp because it dries so fast. So put a little CA glue there, a little CA glue there, and a little CA glue there. We spray the activator in the pocket and that is going to hold that in place while the wood glue dries. I'm just mixing up some Total Boat epoxy here. I'm gonna do one layer of clear before I start adding the color. I think I cut the pockets a little too deep at a quarter of an inch. And uh, I think this is just gonna make it easier on me. Everything is an experiment. This could go totally wrong. This is the, the pigment that I'm using. Now that I'm doing this, I probably could have poured acrylic paint in there and then an epoxy coating on top probably would have been a lot easier, but why not challenge ourselves? I'm being sloppy and that's okay because it's supposed to look like paint spilling and dripping. And if it doesn't go all the way to the surface, that's also okay because I can put a coat of clear on top of that. We are running out of time. The epoxy is starting to set. It's hardening up. So, but just in time. That was super stressful. I think it's going to be okay though. So the epoxy is now dry. I have a couple of options to flatten the bench. I could flatten the bench with the CNC, but that would be a lot of work since the CNC doesn't, it's not wide enough and long enough. So I'd have to build rails and move the CNC up and down this way. Another option is build rails and then use the router method, which I think I am going to do just not today. So, we're gonna get most of this with the hand plane and then we'll finish up with the, with the sanding because this is a lot faster. It's a lot more satisfying. Probably looks cooler on camera. Since this was raised up above like an eighth of an inch, it's harder to use the bigger hand plane because it would catch against the, the neighboring inlays. So I'm using the smaller one. Both of the blades need to be sharpened. I don't want, I'm being real stubborn right now and I don't want to sharpen them. So we've just been plowing through it. I might do the router sled method and take an eighth of an inch off and that would get rid of all the, there, there's like, I, something happened here where I spilled dye many months ago. There's hammer marks and engine oil and it's flat enough for now. But it's never been perfectly flat, but maybe someday we'll work on that. So now I'm just going to put a coat of clear gloss varnish. I have never put any kind of, as far as I can remember, any kind of finish on my workbench. I've always liked the wood feel. And I've always sanded it to 80 grit, so it was kind of rough and had a texture and things wouldn't slide off. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna varnish my bench. Full disclosure, Stepcraft, they're not paying me for this video. They are not reviewing this video before I publish it, but they did send me the CNC to test out and use. And when I say test out and use, I mean they gave me the CNC. 
all the bits come from tools today. I will have a link to all the bits that I used as well. I think I just used two, the eighth inch and the quarter inch. But uh, I also got this big old, what is this? What is uh, slab leveler, which I've got a lot of live slabs in there. This bit is gonna come in super handy for things that I don't wanna run through the planer or can't run through the planer or just that bit's gonna come in super handy. Also great for leveling a spoil board. Although I've never leveled my spoil boards. It's just, it's, uh, I've never needed that precision when it comes to like the woodworking stuff. I'm looking forward to doing the router sled and getting a super flat because it's going to get rid of all the stains on there previously and all the hammer marks. And it's going to make this bench look brand new. It is, what do you think it is, Dan? Three inches thick. So we've got a lot of room to play with. So before we go, uh, Tracy over at KenCraft gave me a great tip. One of the common issues you have with CNC is how to hold down various things. And I got this, it's a composite nailer, which uses these plastic nails that uh, there's enough pressure there where it'll go through your board and just attach it to your spoil board. And so then if the CNC router hits one of these plastic nails, no big deal. It just shaves it off and you don't ruin your bits. And I haven't tried this out yet. I just opened the box. But to then to remove the piece, you can smack it from the side and get that shear force and it comes free. And it's just a great, quick, easy way of holding things down. So I'm, I got this composite nailer just for my CNC. And then just a couple of days ago, Stepcraft announced a new vacuum hold down system for their CNCs. I gotta get this. So this is next on my list of things to get. But the, the top of the table has a grid in there that you can custom fit a gasket to hold down your piece with a vacuum, with a, what would you use, Dan? Vacuum. A, a vacuum. Yeah, you would use a vacuum to hold down the piece. That is really freaking cool. So that is definitely on the list. Uh, I think we're going to do in the future a whole hold down video for routers and sanders and cncs maybe we can come up with 10 different ways to hold pieces down to your bench so if you want to see that uh give me that thumbs up my ass also we're going to do a, a complete we're going to do a separate video on leveling the bench how many times am i going to say this but that deserves its own video because that's going to take time there's going to be lots of great tips in there so that is going to wrap it up Whew, that was a that was a long one so as always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.